To play Find My X, you will need to create 30 action tiles. Do this with permanent marker so they don't rub off. You'll need to create 22 as a set like this, and then the other eight with an operation and a number between one and six. They can be random. Uh, you'll also need a set of transparent tiles and a couple of beads, the 10 by 10 Think Square grid, and the Think Square overlay. Once you've started this, the tiles get placed out in a six by five rectangle, and it doesn't matter where on the board, as long as it's a six by five rectangle that's been created. I'll do that for you now. A player begins by selecting a random algebra equation, either from the Think Square website or from their teacher. This might be the equation. The aim is to solve that equation using the least amount of tiles possible by starting in a corner. Let me show you what I mean. To solve this equation, the first thing you need to do is to subtract four from both sides. To do that, you're getting the x by itself, and I like to think of algebra a lot like tug of war, is if you wanna find out how strong someone is, this someone is your x, if you wanted to find out how strong they are, they need to be on the tug of war rope by themselves. And so at the moment, there's something that's tripling their strength and something that's adding four. So if we subtract that from both sides, we get 15 over here, and this disappears because plus and minus are opposites of each other. So now we've got three lots of that person equals 15. And now we don't want to find out what triple of them is. We want to find out what they are by themselves. So we need to divide to get rid of that three. So we divide on both sides by three. And again, like tug of war, if you divided a team by three and uh, didn't divide the other team by three, there'd be outrage. People would be, uh, yeah, cracking it. So that gets rid of that. And 15 divided by three is five. So the two actions that we need to take are subtracting four to get rid of that and the dividing by three. If we look on the board here and we say a divided by three is over here and here and a subtracting four is over here. We need to start, and there's another one actually, we need to start in a corner and use the least amount of tiles possible to solve this equation. Now we need to subtract four first because if we divide by three from the start, you'll have to divide four by three and that won't work unless you like decimal numbers, which no one does. So we need to do this one first. So imagine you did this as your path. You'd use four tiles, one, two, three, four. Every tile you place has to be touching the tile previous to it. So you won't use the minus two action, but you will use the minus four here. So to show that we did, we put a bead on top of it. And then we won't use this minus two action, but we will divide by three. So these are the two actions that you've chosen, indicated by using the bead. And it's taken four tiles to solve that equation. Now there might be a smarter way of doing that. For example, I can see here that taking away one and three would be the same as taking away four. So I might actually start in this corner by subtracting one, then subtracting three, then dividing by three. And that would get us to the same place, but you've only used three tiles to do so. You can also play this game with two players, solving both equations at the same time. You'll need two random equations, which you can get off the Think Square website or from your teacher. And now we've got to create a path to solve both of these players' equations at the same time. So they're working together with each other to do that. First, they might want to identify the actions they need to take to solve their equation. So this player would need to subtract five from both sides and also multiply by three. That would help them solve their equation. I'll just put a square around these ones. This player would need to subtract two and divide by three to both sides to solve their equation. And again, a rectangle around to show the actions. So once players have identified these are the actions they need to take, they might just put some tiles out to show where those actions are so they can figure out how to create the shortest path 
to solve both of their equations at the same time. I think that's all of them. So, if this player looks down here, so we'll call them player two, player two looks, they can solve their equation in just two tiles because remember the path has to start from the corner. These two tiles would solve that player's equation but then it leaves the other player stranded a long way away and so you need to create a path with tiles without choosing the actions. Remember when you place a tile down you can either choose to take the action and if you do that you'd put a bead on top to show you have or it can just be a pathway on, on the way to actions you actually want to take. So the actions, this player actually wants to take a minus five and times three. Now they're a long way from this corner, but let's just imagine this player had a bit of influence. So they said, I want to start on this corner. That, that gives them a tick for one of their actions. So this action's done, they've taken that. We'll put a bead on top. They'll also want to divide by three because that completes their equation. But remember, they're working as a team. This isn't a race. So they've finished solving their equation now. They've taken those two actions and this player hasn't. They're now going to place some tiles to get to the minus five. So these are just wasted. You can't use them as actions. And now they've gotten to the minus five here. This player will take that action. We'll put an orange tire, orange bead on it to show that. And now they've got to make it to a times by three, which is still another three tiles away. And then they put a bead on that. So this, this path has solved both equations, but it seems a rather long path. I think you've got nine tiles here, if you count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me count again because that was pretty rubbish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there you go. Um, but I'm sure we could do better if we thought of creative ways of solving maybe the other player's equation that's a long way away. So taking five could be done by maybe, see here, two and four, that would be taking six and then adding one. So we could just add that in as an action here and this player would still take both those actions. This player would take the minus two, the minus four, which is like taking away six, and then add one. And so now we don't need to get to that minus five anymore because we've already taken away five by choosing those actions. Now all they need to do is times by three. And since we're here, we can place a tile there and there, and these ones would come off. And that player would now have solved their equation. So we've used one, two, three, four, five, six, six tiles. Uh, we've used a few more actions, but remember it's scored by the number of tiles you use, not the number of actions you take. So these players would work together and use as few tiles as possible. And if they want to play survival mode, you can check the PDF for how many tiles you get in each round. It gets lower and lower as you go on. And the idea is that you save tiles in the initial rounds to spend later on in the game.